In this episode, we're setting up the look and feel of our Niagara Fluids water under the water. Hey guys, welcome to today's episode. And when I was thinking about recording this episode, I was thinking to myself, man, I don't know diddly squat about post-process materials, so how the heck am I going to make this episode? But I was on my morning walk, and then it hit me suddenly, like, why do we need to create a brand new post-process material for water when our UE5 water already has one? So why can't we just go into that material, take what they already have, and apply that to any other water that we have in our game? In the words of Steve Jobs, maybe it was Bill Gates, good artists copy, great artists steal, but I'm not a great artist, so we're just going to copy from the UE5 water. And there are no new concepts today because from a technical standpoint, nothing that we're doing this episode is new to this series. So let's get right to it. So to start, guys, this might be obvious, but I just like making sure you know about this. So you need two plugins for this episode. So you're going to need your Niagara Fluids plugin checked, and also you're going to need UE5 water. So if you search for water, make sure that's checked. If you don't have either of those, then check those, restart the engine. So for this episode, we're going to create a brand new post-process material for our shallow interactive water body that we started last episode. And this is the second post-process material that we've created as part of this series. And so I'm going to continue the same folder that we started in episode 43, which was our damage post process effect. So MS presets here and then post process materials. And I'm going to right click here. We're going to do a new material and we're going to call it M underscore Niagara fluids water underscore post process. And we'll go into that. First thing we need to do is we need to change the material domain. So it's not a surface, it's post process. So now all we got is the emissive color node, like what's going to happen on our screen. Now the next step. So for that, we got to go to our UE5 ocean water body, come all the way over here and select your UE5 water. We got to scroll down in the details pane, scroll down, 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 down. We got to get to our underwater post process material here, go into that. And it's going to open another post-process material, which is from our UE5 water body. And it's quite possible because water is still experimental. All this is going to change in future updates to Unreal Engine 5. So if it does look different than what I've got here, that's totally fine. I think you can still copy the same extinction and fog notes. You're also going to have to copy any of the red notes that are connected to that. The scene texture, the mask, this down here. So let's actually do that. So I'm going to zoom out, move this out. We're going to copy all of this here. So everything before this multiply node, everything that's around extinction and fog right here. Control C copy over to our new material and then just control V paste it in. Got an extra lerp node. I'm sure that's because water's experimental. I'm going to delete that and we're going to connect this up here. And then our material should be looking blue over here. So apply and save. And the last thing I'm going to do here is we're going to create a child material for this new material we just created. And the reason is I want to be able to change these scalar parameters here, especially the fog. And this is going to determine how dense our water is, like how far into the distance we can see things in our water. So we can close out of this material. We won't need that anymore. And we can also close out of our underwater post-process volume here. If you get this, say no, we're not applying any changes. All right, so back to our content drawer. We're going to right click on the material we just created and create a material instance. And we can keep the name just fine the way it is so inst at the end that just means it's child material instance double click to go into that and by the way i should also mention that you can change a lot of the things related to your underwater material here so you can change for example the color but the key variable here that i found is useful to be able to manipulate is the fog like how dense is that water how far into the distance do you want your player to be able to see all right so i'm going to go back 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 into our cave we're going to select our shallow interactive water body here we'll go into the blueprint So if we go over to the viewport, so we see right now we just have a plane that we set up last episode. So what I'm going to do now is we are going to add a box underneath that plane. And initially, I just added the post process immediately to it. But the problem is if we don't constrain the post process volume, it just applies everywhere. And so we want it to be confined to the underwater space. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a collision box. So if I search for collision box collision here, and I'm going to rename this box collision. And in the box extend here, I'm just going to change it to 1000 by 1000 by 1000. And the reason I'm doing that is because it's going to be the same size and shape of our water, but it has to be underneath, obviously. And then for the location of that box, obviously we don't want it to be above the water. So I found I needed to actually move it to negative 1100. At first I tried just negative 1000, like right under the water. And for whatever reason, that wasn't actually working appropriately. And I genuinely don't know why that is. So if anybody knows, please post in the comments below why we need that extra 100 centimeters between this box and the water plane. But without putting in that extra 100 centimeters, I was seeing the post process effect on top of the water. All right, so now that we have our box collision, select that, make sure that's selected and then add a post process component so right there and make sure it's underneath your box collision just like this so over on the right hand side in the details panel search for unbound so we want to make sure it's not unbound we want to uncheck that 
And then if we search for just the word bound, then we get this option to use attach parent bound. And we do want to use our attach parent bound because that's the box collision. And so back in our post process here, then what I can search for is material. And under post process materials here, I can expand that. And we're just going to add a material plus sign there, asset reference. And then we can search for our M underscore Niagara fluids water post process, but make sure to choose the instance. So in case you change any properties of the water in the instance, then you've got it right there. And compile and save your blueprint and we are ready to test this so i'll just come over here right click play from here all right so looking under the water and our whole world is blue but the problem is i do not see the actual plane of the niagara particles right so if i go under the water then nothing it's just blue and what i want to be able to see is i want to see those niagara particles kind of moving along the surface of the water so basically that Niagara system that we set up last episode, by default, it's only one-sided. So we have to go back into the Niagara system and there's a simple setting that we can change to make it two-sided. So in our blueprint, the water surface underscore NS, we just have to come over to our Niagara system here. And if I go into the shallow water emitter, specifically select the plane up here, select the mesh, and then go into the explicit material here. So there's an option in this material, if you scroll down a little bit, you gotta check this two-sided and then check the checkbox here. The other thing that I found, and this could just be me hallucinating, I could be imagining all of this, but I think the water looks better if I check this output translucent velocity setting. I have no idea what it does, but I think the water looks better. And so if anyone has any knowledge as to what that setting actually does or why it looks better or why I'm just imagining it, please post in the comments below. All right, save this. Exit out of the material, exit out of Niagara, exit out of our blueprint. Let's test again. So now when I look underneath, Voila, we've got our underwater water. So for the final thing here, guys, I just want to show you how the settings in your child material can affect how this looks under the water. So right now the visibility is pretty far out because it's set up with the standard ocean settings. But if you go into the child material, and you can even do this at runtime like I'm doing here. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this fog all the way up to 0.01. That's going to increase it a lot. And you can see the difference that that made. And I think I'm gonna keep it this foggy in our cave because this is murky water. Maybe I've got images of Gollum in my head kind of lurking around in that cave water, but you get the idea. And for the scattering anisotropy setting, just setting this to a higher value, I found that that made the water feel a lot darker. So 0 0.8, but there's a problem changing the scattering anisotropy setting. And let me show you why, because if I go under the water, so we're going into deep water and then I look up based on where the directional light is. So based on our sunlight, which doesn't make sense because we're in a cave, based on that sunlight, then all that light is having a much more significant effect in our water. And here's what we're gonna do to address that. So I found that changing this setting back to 0.2, back to the normal effect, that gets rid of it. But I do like having this setting. And I think instead it makes sense to have a simple switch node in our material itself, such that we could say, okay, the material instance here, this is underground. And in this way we could have multiple material instances, one for above ground water, one for below ground water, and we could just turn that on and off. So the way we're gonna handle that is back in our material here. Let me expand this. So we're gonna add what's called a switch parameter. So we can drag out a pin from the Schlick phase here and we can search for a switch parameter, static switch parameter. And we can name this above ground question mark. And you could just change the name over here too. And so if this is true, if we're above ground, I wanna hook up this multiply node right here to the true. And then this one to the add here. Then we get an error here because we need to hook up a false. And what I found to work well, let me just make some more space here. I'm gonna move these out move this out and then also move these out here. What I found to work well, if this is false, if we're not above ground, is I'm going to take our scattering anisotropy setting and then divide that by 10. And then I'm just gonna move this multiply node up. We're gonna duplicate this multiply node. We're gonna connect up this divide to this multiply here. Because if I didn't divide this by 10, then this effect was way too strong. And then I can connect this up to the false. All right, so if you got all that, just hit apply here, save this. If we go back to our material instance, I'm gonna move this to the side of the screen again. So then we have this above ground check mark that we can just check when we're above ground. But in our case, we want it by default to be under the ground. That's totally fine. So let's see how this works now. So now when I go under, we still have the effect, but we don't see our sunlight because we're under the ground. And the last thing I wanna point out here is with this unchecked, this above ground check mark, the scattering anisotropy setting, we can now set this back to 0.2. Setting this to a lower value then makes it a darker blue. And to be honest, I don't fully understand this. I just played with it and I got a pretty good effect. So if you understand the details of how that works and why, please post in the comments below.
So honestly, guys, right here, this could be the end of the episode, but there's one other thing that I mentioned three episodes ago, and I keep meaning to cover it in an episode, but our previous episodes have all been really long. And that is how to make our walls glisten, like how to make our walls of the cave look like they're actually wet, like they've got water on them. So the way we do this is we select any of our assets here. And what I'm actually gonna do is go back to content, go over to mega scans, and I'll go into 3D assets, earth quadrant, the massive tundra that we set up three episodes ago. So these are the four assets that we used in our cave episode to set up the floors and the walls of the cave. So I'm going to go into the first one and I'll go into that material here. And what you could do is you could duplicate this, make a second instance of the material. But let me just show you what you need to do in order to make this glisten, like make it feel like there's water on it. So there are two settings that we need to manipulate. So one is our base specular and the other is our max roughness here. And if you want to make the material maximally shiny, you crank the specular up all the way to one and the max roughness all the way down to zero. Now, I found that that was a little bit too shiny. It just looked artificial, didn't look real. So I'm going to set this to 0.9 for the specular. And then when you set the max roughness down, that's when it really starts to glisten. So 0.1. So I'm going to save this and we'll go into each of our other three materials. So each of the other three massive tundra formations, I keep saying tundra, but it is tundra, pretty sure. I'm sure you guys will correct me if I'm wrong. Back to massive tundra, go into that folder, two more. And so now you can already see it, but let me do a play from here. So right click, play from here. And now, especially when I've got a light source over our rocks. So let me just expand this so you could see it. It would help if I didn't fall down the mountain. Let me get back up. So with a light source over the rocks, you see it really start to glisten there and kind of shine a little bit. Now it's even crazier if you set it to zero and one, but you get the idea. It really gives the cave that kind of damp look and feel. Now also three episodes ago, I said create separate foliage assets for our roof here. So what we did is under the content drawer, back to the earth quadrant under main palette here, we created new foliage assets for earth rock one through earth rock seven ceiling here. And the reason I suggested creating separate foliage assets for these is so that you could give them an override material where you could also make the roof, the ceiling glisten. And the way you do that is you go into the foliage asset and then under advanced here, you can say override materials and you just do it the same way that we did on the post process effect. But now you're doing it for static meshes. But when I tried this out, it just didn't look good. I didn't like the effect. So we're gonna keep the ceiling just as is. The main reason it didn't look good is because the outlines of the individual rocks were clearly showing when they were glistening. And then you could see that I just painted it as foliage. But I think I like it just fine with just the walls and the floor glistening. And the only thing missing is some cave-like sound, some cave-like sound effects. So hold on to that. It's coming up. So that concludes our episode for today. And our very next episode is probably going to be the shortest episode of the series because all we're doing is we're solving one particular problem and I figured we can make it into a simple tutorial on blueprint function libraries. And that problem we actually created last episode when we ignored our water body ocean here. So we're switching from this over to this. And I'll show you how that's done in about two minutes. So I hope to see you there.